get started on the first point. So I wanted to um, bring this up of something that I wanted to do. Um, so with all things, um, yeah, it, it's a proposal, in my opinion, until we start developing it, right? So um, like I have all these plans in place, but like um, I, I, I'll move quickly to, to put these things in, but then people should be welcome to challenge it. But we're also not going to wait for anybody. So um, one thing in particular is value stream management. So it's sort of this cryptic thing that we haven't really been able to define very well. Um, and so, um, but at least Annabelle did a good job um, of sketching out one design and concept for the September 20th event that Mark Funsack proposed. So um, if you still don't know what VSM is, uh, that, that's a good place to start. And so essentially we had a couple of ideas there. We said that we wanted to track the time that um, you would be within a certain stage, right? So if you're in the in dev stage um, or in, you're in the in QA stage or in UAT stage, how long does it take for somebody to um, be in one of those stages for, um, so what are the statistics? What is the average of that per team? What is the, uh, the worst time and the best time and so on and so forth. Um, so I wanted to mention that um, initially our thinking was that, okay, let's continue to use the issue board because we have the issue board, we have that, and then we have labels um, represent workflow stages and we have labels represent a lot of things. So we ran into a lot of trouble in the past with labels rep representing stages and the original thinking like half a year ago said, okay, that's fine. We're going to charge ahead and we're going to use labels to, to still represent stages and we're going to build VSM on top of it. And we also uh, did some upcoming work, which is label tracking events to help with that. Um, the past couple of weeks, I've been thinking that uh, if we continue to do that, it's going to be very messy because not only are labels representing stages now, I mean, they are doing that right now, but if we, if you look at GitLab, labels representing stages are limited to the um, to the work to to an issue board, but nothing else, right? Um, we don't build on top of that understanding. That understanding is there, but we don't build on top of that. So when we, if we build on top of that and have the expectation, um, if you think about all the designs and all the things that come after that, it's going to get a lot messy because sometimes labels don't represent a stage, and you have to account for that. And so. I saw an opportunity um, for an idea is we already want to do enforced workflows per group um, as a separate concept. And so we wanted to say like sort of like approvals, like you have a uh, whip and then you have approved by whoever in a merge request and then, and then that blocks it to getting merged. So, so that workflow stage or gating is something customers have been asking forever. It's something that JIRA supports. Um, and then so I'll let Sean go to his point in a second. Um, but it's something that clearly the market wants and something that we, we scoped out that we want earlier. So I, I thought, why don't we build VSM on top of that since we're, we need that feature anyways. And if we do that, that's going to be a lot easier to build VSM on top of. So in particular, what I'm suggesting is a uh, letter C, we have enforced workflows per group. So at a group level, you would say that every issue goes through in dev and QA and UAT and then closed. And then there's some details there that I put on that particular issue. Um, and, and if that's at the group level, you have a board which can inherit. So you can have a special type of board which uses that enforced workflow automatically. Uh, and then once you have that, then you can build VSM on top of that very, very easily because you have stages or states. I call them stages for, for a particular reason. Um, and then you can build VSM on top of that. And then my last point before I'll let everybody jump in um, is that um, my concept right now of uh, enforced workflows is that we're not going to introduce additional states. So we're always going to have two states. It's going to be open and closed. And the reason we want to do that is we don't want to break GitLab. We don't want to take like 10 months building code that, that will take forever to be released but my proposal is that within the open state, you have multiple stages. So even if, and then those stages are customizable per group. And so even if we release the first feature, which is literally just transition an issue from one stage to another stage, but still within the open state, 
all your features in GitLab will still work because you, every issue will still have an open state versus a closed state. And that is still clearly well-defined. And this is um, uh, on top of the existing open. So, so I'll stop there. Uh, Sean has a point, but anybody can feel free to jump in on anything. So, I mean, if Sean wrote something first, I guess I, he gets first tips. You already answered my point, I think, so that's good. Okay. Um, do, so at GitLab, we dog food a lot. We don't dog food everything. Like we don't dog food LLAP, for instance. Um, we don't dog food Elasticsearch at the moment, like we've discussed. Um, there's a bunch of like um, specific features that we also oh, don't that, use. That's a difference. We don't dog food. <laughs> Sometimes right. we can there's, there's a bunch of stuff we don't dog food for. <laughs> Very reasons. Yep. Would do you see us as wanting work, enforced workflows, or this just being more for more uh, bigger enterprise type customers? I, I can definitely see us. So that, that's a great question, Sean. Like how how like I always find it. I love being on the plan team because it's so easy to build things because I don't have to worry that nobody's going to use it. Um, and so I always think about this point. Um, and so. This in particular, I think we can at least use the version that is not that restrictive. And so, for example, you can imagine our, our first version, you, you have all the stages, but then there's no restriction that, this is one idea, I don't know if we will build this. So, right? like you know would have multiple Jira stages. Much, but in like Jira terms, you would have the states, but everyone would be able to transition to every other one. So like in Jira, right. you have state transitions. Um, exactly. So that's what we do. Like, yeah, and the, the enforced workflow thing is you can say like, okay, from in dev, you can only go to in review or you can go back to not started, but you right. can't go straight to UAT. Um, right. Or you can go straight to UAT maybe, um, but in Jira, you can configure all that. So, okay, so the, yeah. your idea is that we would probably maybe use the states like we do with the in dev and in review labels, but we wouldn't enforce the transitions between those for ourselves. I would, there, there's a couple of ways I can think of it because if we don't enforce it, then and then we build a feature later that requires enforcing that's additional configuration and that might be a bad idea how i can envision one way that we get around this ourselves when, when we use it is that it, it's our first feature it's going to be linear transitions only so you can jump around and have that stupid graph that jira does but we might need it in the future so i guess it's not stupid um but you can jump to a later stage but but that's essentially GitLab clicking four, five times for you, right? So you can drag it over, but then GitLab just like in, in instantaneously, it's moving through in-dev and QA in UAT for you automatically. So that's a different way around that as well. And then, so for example, the closes, um, I thought about like how merge requests close an issue automatically. We obviously don't want to break that, at least as a, as a first release, we don't want to change any of our internal uh, processes. So maybe that would still work and you need to have the right permissions or something like that. So I haven't gotten a lot of, I haven't thought in detail about that yet. Oh but yeah. Think, but that was, that was the thing that I really hated about this thing with Jira is that you could set permissions on who could move things into each state. Right. Um, right. Which sounds good because it gives you control. But if you only let the QA team, for instance, move it into right, the right. out of QA state and they're not available, then you're kind of stuck. And it might be something that doesn't actually need QA because it is, for instance, right, a fix exactly. to the change log. Um, so, yeah. Well, then, then like a big enterprise would say, then your requirement should have a checkbox that says it doesn't need QA, right? So, like, we yes, can so go. Then you have different issue types. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. That's, that's, so that's, that's what Jira is. Um, exactly. Just if, if anybody here exactly. hasn't used Jira, that, that's that's how you do Jira. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so that's why we have to be really. So I think we have to be doubly smart here. Like we we can't reinvent Jira, but at the same time. Uh, or not, but, but, and also we have to invent it in a way that we can use it because we want to keep using our own software as much as we can. So I think, um, but I don't see any like inherent fundamental philosophical blockers to anything I've proposed yet. Um, so I think all these things can be designed correctly. Um, but those are super valid concerns that I, I, I was thinking about as well. So but thanks for bringing those up. Um, and thanks for, for summarizing, because I, I, I'm not good at typing. Uh, other, how, how uh, is this, ahead, Pedro? if we're not enforcing the transitions, um, 
I, I don't understand what this is about then. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's the enforcing the transition and then there's logging the transitions, right? So both are important from like a enterprise -y thing. So enforcing the transition is exactly like Sean said, right? Like uh, roles and permission, enforcing transitions, you're not allowed to get past. Um, and then the, uh, the logging, the transitions, both are a way to uh, incent behavior or correct behavior, right? So if, if everything is logged, right, then you're still responsible or your the actions you take are laid for everybody to see. And therefore, you would be incented not to do something incorrect, right? So I right. can see a, see a mode of that or I can see a version of that where as a developer, right, or we have that right now in GitLab, everything we do has most or more or less as a system note mm -hmm. and everybody can see what you did. Like I, I, I mistakenly moved something uh, from an issue that Brett on our team was working on and he got really pissed off, rightfully so. Um, so then like everybody can see in the future that like Victor screwed up there. And so um, that would be an example of how um, not enforcing it could go. And then even within enforcing, like I said, you can have, you can have the really tight version that, uh, that Sean was getting, alluding to, which is to, to get out of the QA stage, only a QA role can do. So that's one version. Another version is, um, or, or a less strict version that you just have to go through all the stages step by step. Um, and then, but like anybody can do that. Yeah, so but, but what I'm asking is if, so, um, if we're not doing the enforcing of transitions, we're just mm -hmm. enforcing a specific workflow. Um, right, right. How? Then you can um, still see the, the timestamps of every one of those things happening, right? Right. There's still yeah, value we, there. We, we, exactly. So we already have that today and we're doing the event uh, thing for changing labels. And a person can already create a board with the workflow that they want. And so it's just dragging and dropping and you can jump from one stage to the other or from the first one to the last one. Uh, so I, I don't understand. No, you're right. If, I think you're right, yeah. I think, the, yeah. The enforcing of transitions? Yeah, well, I, I think I think. What are right. we doing differently? Or maybe it's the experience that you want to be different? Um, no, no, I think you're right, Pedro, because we, we can, the experience would be a nice to have, but in talking with customers, they don't, they wouldn't think what I just said is sufficient. They would definitely want what you said. Um, definitely that enforcement. So we have to like figure out what that is. Is, is that going to be um, permissions? Um, but some, something a little bit tighter. There's probably something in between. I, I can't think of something. I, I can't think of something off the top of my head in detail right now, but I, I don't want to, necessarily build in new roles right now um we can definitely use our existing roles um to to do it but i don't want to build in new roles um because we other, there's a bazillion reasons why we don't want to do that and so we don't want to add yet another reason to to do that yeah so so basically <clears throat> we already do everything that is needed except the rules except the enforcing that of whatever a specific workflow the company has like uh, this person can only move from this stage right. to that stage or uh, it has to stay this amount of time in that stage. i don't know crazy rules right, right? right. And, and that uh, and that is what uh, jira has right uh, um, not saying that we should do it exactly like jira, exactly jira yeah. has that uh, functionality and maybe that's what people want right uh, so so just to understand so if we take out the enforcing of the transitions and the rules uh, we already have everything they need right but the, the the experience gap is still there though right the experience gap like nobody the, the experience gap is still there so it's, it's not as great but i i can i'm pretty sure if, not pretty sure like 100 percent sure some companies are doing that and saying that i want enforced workflows but right now i have they're, they're using stages on a board and then it's, it's not a great experience and they would love to have uh, enforced workflows. Hmm. Okay. And, and, and have you heard this from customers that are not using boards or is it only from people that are using boards and uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the answer to that specifically. Um, are you saying that are, are there anybody not using boards because we don't have enforced workflows, right? 
Or we don't, yeah, yeah, like we don't have this tight. Or maybe they don't know about boards or they don't have not, um, have not looked at boards in a way that allows them to do that. Maybe they just went to a board, it was empty, and they're like, oh, I don't know what this is for. So let me go back to the issue and see if they have any control, like yeah. change to status or change to right. stage. And we don't have that. And maybe they were disappointed because of that. Yeah, so, no, it's hard to know that because that's like arguing from nothingness. Um, but for sure, for, for the opposite is that like they they do they do find these features and, and for for cust i haven't had a customer come to me and say i want to do a workflow board like can gitlab do that like mm -hmm. customers have asked that but it's like they, they just haven't used gitlab before but any customer that's already using gitlab um and one and wants to know that feature is always using that feature when, whenever they come to me as as a customer like in a sales car or something that they, they already have it and it's all it's always like uh, the one customer had, it was crazy. They had a product board and an engineering board. So the product folks would move things through and I guess designers, I don't know if they had designers, but they would move things through and then they wanted to copy that issue. And then they had, they wanted like our copying thing is not, you know, good enough. And they would, they would just not copy, sorry. They would move an issue from that project, the product project or group or whatever it was, I forget to then engineering equivalent, and then it would transition through their board. And, and I was telling them, no, 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 that's crazy. Just have one friggin' board, or just have one project or one group and then have sing one single source of truth issue. Yeah, yeah. So one that, project that's, and two boards or one board. Exactly, so that's usually that's more characteristic of where we need to improve, uh, yeah. of just making the experience easier. Yeah, that, that's not, not that was what I. Yeah, the, not the discovery feat, discoverability of the feature itself. And, and, and maybe maybe it's both, right? So, mm -hmm. and that's what yeah. I want to understand is is the problem like people look at boards and they don't understand uh, how that can help them do workflows, or is it the other way around? And some people don't even know about boards, and maybe we need to service that better inside of an issue page, for example. Right, right, right. Uh, right. And because they're looking at the issue, they're going to close the issue, or I don't know, they're looking to move the issue. I know, I don't know. Somehow yeah. we need to see what are the hints of someone going to move an issue to another stage. Uh, exactly. And, 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 and once then, it's, yeah, exactly. Once it's a stage, a proper stage, and not part of a board or a label, then it's a lot easier to handle. Like, like exactly you said, like, People have been asking forever, I want to know the board stage on, on an issue, or I want to move a, an issue to another board stage while on the issue. And like we can do that, but not really right now. And the reason is because it's hacky, right? So I had an issue a while back that says that um, workflow stages should be scoped to a board. But when I thought about it like last week, it didn't make sense at all. It should be scoped to a group. And then the board should inherit that automatically. And then, so once you have that, then it's, it's all consistent across. So that's yet another reason we, uh, this will help. Um, Fati, uh, which thing were you cringing at? There's, there's so many things we talked about. Uh, the last one you're talking about, you know, the, the, uh, having the boards and moving the issues around that one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good, good, good. Uh, I didn't know if you just didn't like the concept of enforced workflows in general. So oh, I, I think <laughs> I think GitLab in general is warming up to more structure and enterprisey things uh, as, <laughs> as as we scale. But uh, we still have to be super careful, like about this yeah. this type. Yes, the cloning of the issues was was particularly uh, mouth opening. But um, one of the things I want to mention now at, that at this point, Victor, is that when you talk about inheriting this sort of stages into the boards. One of the things that I didn't see in these issues highlighted is that idea of having a board created just as we have now with a signees list or milestones list or whatever, and still being able to distinguish the stage of the, the issues that they're in. I see that the group board with enforced workflow will basically enforce the workflow throughout the board. Right, right, right. Imagine a, a planned board where I have like all the assigned lists they have their issues. And uh, one of the things that we discussed past, I don't know if it was in particular about swim lanes or not, but having right, right, right. the issue transition to the bottom part of the board because it's already in, in review, that sort of thing. Yeah, I don't think it's covered, is it, on, on this no. uh, bulk of work? 
Yeah, d definitely. This is what I've sketched out is a, definitely a thin slice here. And if you look at like EFG, um, the enforced workflow is a stepping stone to get the SM, right? So, so like I said earlier, like there's definitely a, a market need, like there's like a whole VSM, a Forrester thing that we did, you know, okay with. So that's why it's on our homepage, but definitely that's like a, um, a driving point here. And like when, when I show this to Yop, he, he agrees with it. Like, we want to move fast, but we want to still build like solid foundation. So, so I was, as I thought about this more, I was fairly convinced that if we build VSM per original plans, it's going to be really messy. So I, I think, um, you know, at least my boss would be okay with um, us taking time to build the enforced workflows to a point where it's good enough that we can build VSM. But, but like, what is that line? Like how good does that enforced workflow have to be? And then one of the things that Andre, I think you're exactly saying is that if you have an enforced workflow board, by definition, it's, it's more powerful, but maybe you don't have the, the mix board functionality. You don't have that anymore. Or you, it's harder to do assignee lists and stuff. Yeah. Like that. So you use that, lose that type of functionality. But um, like, again, if I were to design in 30 seconds, yes, I would just add that additional dimensionality, which is swim lanes, the horizontal dimensionality. You could use that to have uh, assignees or, or, or even uh, milestones would be crazy, but even labels, right? You can have labels um, yep. board into multiple labels. So I think that would be, that's possible, but like, I think it would be interesting if, when, if and when we release in first workflows, it will be a different board type, at least how I envision it right now. But it will be like almost like, um, I don't know if, like we wouldn't, definitely wouldn't say market it as it's just a step back but we say it's, it's something different which it is um mm -hmm. but we would be i see i see it as a sorry to interrupt but no, no, please, please. As a mar marginally marginally related but different scope effort uh which was more about the swim lanes than the enforced workflow however we will inherit that information and the stages that will be used then on, on right on that scope so yeah yeah Maybe. and then the, the other thing I, as i thought about that particular point more is um, as you, so I should do a better job of writing these things down. Um, so the, the great thing about that is say you're a team, like you're the plan team, right? And then you can still have, so maybe we'll have views maybe, or maybe we'll still have multiple boards when we're, we're doing this. We're going to still have like a backend board, a front end board and a signing board that has both backend and front end folks. And then we'll have a different board just for the workflow stages. So. So from that perspective, I'm really excited because like how we've designed boards up to now, it's still flexible. So you don't lose all that functionality, right? So you're using GitLab Ultimate, you can create uh, all, if you're using GitLab Premium, you can, or if you, okay, so if you're just using GitLab um, Starter, you can have multiple boards and one of those boards would be workflow boards with labels. Then you use GitLab Premium, then you can start using assignee list and milestone lists then you use GitLab Ultimate, then you throw, quote unquote throw out your workflow board with labels and you replace it with a workflow board using stages, right? So that, I think again, that's all consistent and that's how we would use it, I imagine. And so I'm excited that it's not like we're switching to this other mode and then like all the other things that we're using on a team-based level would, would have yeah. to be reset. We're just asking for a, a customer to say, oh, you before you had like workflows and labels, now, you know, Yoba is going to say like build an importer or an upgrade path where you take those workflow labels and you turn them into like custom stages. Right. And then, and then you would have a board and then that would just work. Like he's going to say you need that for adoption, which I'm going to agree and cringe. But um, yeah, so, so that, I, I think that those use cases will still be there. So I think that's great. Um, but, but very good point. Um, and then one, one, what did I want to say last? Oh yeah, so so with the swim lanes, um, how I've sort of reserved that right now, or, or like how that would be super useful is if you look at letter G, uh, sorry, not letter G, a uh, letter F. So that's a concept that um, Annabelle put together with a lot of direction from Mark. Um, and so the concept there is that there's an active state and an idle state there. So this is still really, really um, just me thinking in a cave. So this, it needs a lot more collaboration to nail this down. Um, but the concept here is that in VSM, we really want to identify 
um, whether a issue is idle or active or not, not an issue, but just at, at the end of your iteration, at the end of your quarter, um, and then you're like Tommy, right? Who's uh, Sean's boss right now. And then Tom, and then there's also Dowie and other stuff like that. And he wants to see like across all the teams or as a roll up, like how are the teams doing? Uh, are, are all the teams stuck in, in dev and in, inside in dev or in QA? And then within that stage, is there a lot of idle time there? Is, is people actually like doing active work or are they always blocked and then we're doing too many things at once? So this would be super helpful to characterize that. And so my first concept um, is that you just simply say that an issue, if there's no activity in an issue, then it just becomes idle. And then in the database, you just log one day that that's idle there. And then that's all you do. And then visually on the board, it just, it just drops down to that second swimbly. So that is my awesome idea that's not really mine at all. Um, I think it's pretty much Mark's idea. Um, he created an issue way back when. Um, but that's the, that's as I was talking about, like, Yes, enforced workflows is not too exciting, or is exciting, but really the main goal is to really bring this to the VSM land of, of getting this type of metric um, and process of, of having more visibility. Um, so, so that's how I was envisioning using the swim lane. So if we do that, then how do you add more swim lanes for labels? I have no idea, or like, do we not let people do that? So that can get pretty hairy really quickly. So. Uh, maybe we need like a third dimension, like 3D chess in Star Trek. <laughs> so, um, I don't know so how that. Will, that will I, work. I think I think this might work with with labels still. Uh, it just needs to be a different board because here what we're doing. So if if you remember like that discussion that we had initially about swim lanes and there could be a lot of things that we could do with uh, signee swim lanes with labels swim lanes, and one of the examples I gave at the time was. Uh, to uh, so you had the workflow columns, um, and then you could have like in our case, for example, two or three swim lanes, which could be, for example, do twenty second, and then like the catch all swim lane, everything else, or deliverable, and then stretch, and you had those swim lanes. But right. I think if you try to put all of that together with also the if it's idle or not, right, right, I think right. that overcomplicates because you are also then mixing uh, the fact that like each column might also be associated with a different role, right? Um, and, and so I, I I like this design in terms of having swim lanes to say what is active, what is idle. Yeah, uh, and I think that we can piggyback on. I don't know about the, the automatic logic of uh, what you were saying. Like right, 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 right. Yeah, that, that's definitely X you know, amount of time yep. it, it changes. But let's imagine that the, the active and the idle swim lanes are act, actually labels, and each time that, for example, it's in dev, and now you want to pass it on to Q, QA. What you would do? You go into the board and you would drag that card from in dev active to in QA idle, mm, uh, right, right. Because, because if, if you pass it to in QA, it's automatically, or, yep, or most that, that, of yep, yep. idle actually until someone picks it up. And then when someone picks it up, they would put active. And then from in QA to in UAT, they would go to idle in UAT. And so it will be like a zigzagging pattern. Yeah, that no, no, that, that, yep, yep. I can, I can see a variety of, like, I, I don't want to get too much in detail, but you're totally right, Pedro. Like, there's so many concerns there. One of them I had, my, my initial design here is based on, I don't want to introduce a new state. And I just mm -hmm. want to like, that, that's super exposed to the user. And because the main reason is because that the, this idle and active is more for after the fact analysis and less so for like operationally, you're looking at what's idle and active because you don't really care right now, right? You just care that there's something to work on and you're going to work on it. Um, and then, but I think what you're getting at is that that reflects more reality and, and, and what you propose, you could actually like measure to the minute. And, and so I'm arguing that you don't need that, but maybe that's mm -hmm. more natural. So that, that's why I don't want to disagree or agree with mm -hmm. you. And, and, and maybe a, a totally first step that allows us to be flexible as well is just to not uh, 
have those fixed active and idle swim lanes, but just right. allow people to add as many label swim lanes as they want. Right, right. Uh, they could use that for priority. They could use that for activity, like mm, active okay. idle, right. or anything else that they want. Basically, it's just a matrix, right? You're seeing right, workflow. Right, right. You're trying to compare that with another level of information. Sure. Uh, yeah, so no. I think for a first step, we uh, uh, just right off the bat, I would say that labels could be, label swim lanes could be a good thing, but I don't know. We still have to look yeah, into it. Yeah, we have to more detail. figure out. Yeah, no, swim, I love swim lanes because there's another dimensionality. There's vertical with list horizontal with swim lanes. There's board config, which is saved to the board. And then there's the search, which is in the search bar. So there's essentially like four dimensions per board, which is amazing. And then if you have multiple board views per one quote unquote board, that's like a fifth dimension. So you, you can, you can do a lot there from a design perspective, I think. Well, um, what, what to, were you thinking Annabelle when you were working on this for the vision, what, which concerns did you have about this? Or um, good yeah. I don't know where the actual design went um, on the issue, but I was throwing away everything. Basically it was just, you know, here are the stages that you can go through with, with any given issue. And it followed basically the example, um, you know, dev, QA, UAT, deployed, that kind of stuff. And then the swim lanes were only two, idle and active. It's exactly what you said. So it's kind of, it's basically assuming that you're going to have one board that is this uh, enforced workflow and then other boards for everything else. So you can't really do a signy, I mean, no, you can't really do a signy lanes or anything like that for, for what I was thinking. So I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Yeah. The, the assignee swim lanes would be uh, a different uh, thing. Um, but <laughs> what would, do you think, uh, uh, so when you were designing this, like looking at those two swim lanes, did you initially thought it would be uh, okay to have this in a fixed manner or, or, or didn't you give it much, much thought? It was just to get out the, the vision quickly. <laughs> yeah, it was just for the demo. But what do you mean by fixed? Uh, fixed in the sense of like being not necessarily a type of board, but like we give this to you. Like GitLab, we build this kind of board where you have the active and idle swim lanes and that's it. You cannot do any configuration. Uh, and they're not labeled, they're not like, they're not anything, we're not relying on it, anything that already exists. We're creating this new paradigm out of a fixed sense of active and idle uh, instead of allowing users to build their, their swim lanes. I was kind of under the impression that it wouldn't be a true issue board and this would be really value stream management alone. So you'd have your issue boards with whatever configuration you want for milestones, assignees, that kind of stuff. And then this would be VSM. Um, and then idle and active act like labels, but they're not really labels in that in my head, I was thinking it would be completely automated. So you're not, you are zigzagging in a way, but you're not dragging it because you don't really know when it's idle. That would kind of throw off the whole point of, of tracking how much idle time and active time there was. So I was thinking the user or the owner of the whole group would, um, would set sort of, or use time tracking or something to display how much time it should, an issue should take in each stage. And then depending on not so much the activity in the issue, but how long it's been in that stage, it would start moving automatically. Um, this is not for first iteration in any way, and I'm not really sure how this would happen, but that was in my head. Um, so yeah, this was just kind of its own board, and it was just for the demo, so I didn't really think of all the edge cases, or any of them, actually. Yeah, I, I think one thing, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Victor, but I think one idea, or the way I look at this in terms of like VSM and issue boards, and is like VSM is, I didn't think of it of like a, a, of even maybe having that name somewhere in the interface and in the product. It would be like we do VSM in the same way that we say, oh, we do 
agile or we do scrum it's yep, that's that's right I, I always thought of it like a, a it's a yeah it's a category or solution uh, we have to figure that out product marketing is, is <laughs> yeah, something yeah we have a we have a page it's slash vsm and we have um slash forester dash vsm mm -hmm. it's our lessons learned from engagement with forester but uh, you're right like I, I don't see us having that um anywhere um but yeah no no i i i, I uh, echo what when I was putting this together, at least my version, um, uh, I was thinking along the same lines as Annabelle, like the, the, the idle and active are automated, uh, dragging between stages. I think Mark said, oh, I was thinking that it should be automated. Yeah, and I, I agree it should be automated, but then we probably can't automate. automate it. Yeah, we can't automate everything. And like, <laughs> we're not gonna have merge requests on a board anytime soon, and maybe we do, I don't know how that would work. But um, there's got to, in my opinion, there's always going to be room for some manual dragging on a board. Yeah, um, definitely. And, and just to get into specifics, the, the automated part, some of it was more obvious. Like if you've got a related merge request that is right. work in progress and then your move work in progress, then it would move to, you know, review or whatever that next stage would be. And then it, would there be some sort of hook that would tell if it was deployed to staging and then it would move to the next stage? Um, but some of them would definitely need to be manual. Cool, thank you. All right, so we have 15 minutes left. I don't want to take too long, but um, but yeah. So everybody, please dig into the epics and issues and participate. Um, I temporarily put this at like if you look at the first epic, like actually pretty soon. So we'll we'll figure out how this rolls out. But um, I think we have to solve enforced workflows uh, per group. We have to do uh, custom fields as well. And so that's in another epic. Um, so, so those are sort of the big areas where it's very enterprisey, and, and we have a label called governance that I've been using. And it's like a very enterprisey word and not everybody might like it. So I didn't come up with the word. It's, in, it's on the homepage of GitLab about.gitlab.com it's one of our three words at the bottom so it says like governed and something else and something else so it's a it's a it's a word product marketing uh wants to use um so i'm using it and it's also i think is it is i think it's also the one of the categories that we were evaluated on on the vsm forester wave thingy so it, it's consistent there so anyways um uh, so this is going to be coming up pretty soon, but for the rest of the year, we should be focused on uh, what Yob calls boring things, uh, which is pretty funny because like everything we're doing is boring until it's not. Um, so boring things in, in, in the sense that really obvious features that uh, like UI polish and debt in terms of features that, that we don't have yet. So, so these are things upcoming, but really quickly. Um, two A notifications and to do's. Annabelle, you said that uh, you haven't gotten a chance to start working on this yet. So, um, and, and so Annabelle, are you also working on epic relationships? I, I don't want to have you like over, over, uh, overworked or whatever. So, wh what are you focused on right now? Yeah, I am working on epic relationships, although I haven't done anything since the last meeting, really, when I presented those designs. So, I'm not really sure what the next um, step is with that. Okay, so, so I think last time we said that we wanted to do the, have some views for the, the roadmap view. So are you planning to work on that? Oh yeah, that's what it was, okay. yep. Okay, so do you wanna jump on that first before doing to-dos and notifications? Or like, I, I think mo both are important, so I, I don't have too much of a preference, but it's um, just yeah, wanted I'll to probably, know. Yeah, I'll probably start the roadmap because that ties in more directly with the epic relationships. Okay. Um, I also just wanted to give you a heads up that I talked to Clement earlier and he's got some plans for a CSS lab this release. So technically I think I'm kind of 50% on that. Okay. So uh, 11.5, right? Uh, what are we about to release 11.4? We, we're we're going to release 11.4 in uh, 19, no, I can't do math. Okay. But, 19, the 19, window for, but we're so. starting 11.5 development, um, but okay. I also don't know, the CSS lab thing is is not part of the repo of, CE and E, right? So is it separate or is it? It is, it is separate, but I think we're trying to follow the same sort of okay. release date. So yeah, 11.5. Okay, okay, yeah, just, just let us know that, um, well, you did already. So we'll, we'll, we'll 
well, I'll, I'll still ping you as much, but maybe I, I won't expect you to <laughs> respond as, as, as often. Or, or, or if I sense that the backlog is a lot, I'll, I'll sort of like tone it down. But thanks for the update. Pedro, go ahead. Yeah, Annabelle, do you know if uh, those issues for CSS Lab already, like the scope of what you're going to do for 11.5 is already defined? Are you assigned to those issues already? No. Someone asked me what my availability was, and I, it was, I, I don't know. <laughs> so I just figured if, if we just assume it's 50 50 for this release, then that'll okay. just yeah. make things easy. Well, okay. not easy, but you know. Well, I mean, that, that was, wasn't that the initial expectation or communication? It was, yeah. 50 /50. Okay, so I think that's fair. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd yeah. love to have you 100%, but we have to respect the, <laughs> the initial conditions that were introduced, um, <laughs> which sucks. Um, anyway, so Annabelle, again, so you more, more questions from you. So I, I did see your comment. Um, I didn't respond to it yet, but uh, did you want to bring up whatever uh, query you had for this one? Yeah, one second. Um, labels with the same name. Yeah, I was, I'm not sure what. Oh, this is so annoying. What is the expectation? Because I did see the, the combined to do label in a project, but so, I'm not sure. Yeah. So this ahead, is John. basically a consequence of we had project labels, then we had a group labels, then we made it possible for you to use a group label from a parent group. So it's possible to have. I think it's possible to have all three at the same time where you have a label called to do on a group, then you have a subgroup and you have a label called to do on that group. And then you have a project in that group and you have a label to called to do on that project. And if they all have the same name, because we group them by name in the drop down, we have, <laughs> I, I don't even know what labeling that with to do would mean, which, which label should you pick? Should you pick the, the most general one, the one from the, group or should you pick the most specific one the one from the project i'm pretty sure you should pick the one from the middle but who knows um so it's kind of a mess it just it's just a sort of historical um uh, artifact because when we added group labels we didn't make it impossible to have a group label and a project label with the same name i think you can't add one way around, but you can add the other way around. I don't remember mm -hmm. exactly which way. I think you can add a group label if you've already got a project label with that name, but you can't add a project label if you've already got a group label with that name. And same for subgroups. So uh, it's not super clear what it means. And also if you move a group from one place to another, like, you know, you kind of want to the labels. Uh, basically, I think we should not spend too much time on worrying like about making this perfect, as long as it's something you can actually like use so if that's like putting the group name or the project name in the label drop down if there's more than one then maybe that's what we do i, I just I, I, at the moment it's like unusable like as in literally you can't do anything with those labels um but if we could make it usable but terrible that would be quite a big improvement yeah, it's a step yep <laughs> so it looks like right now when i pick the combined color one mm -hmm. it assigns the project one if i'm within the project Right. I think the problem is if you already have the group label assigned or something like that, then you can't unassign any la you can't unassign the label at all. But they are separate labels, right? Because when I went to the project the labels, awesome. it showed the group label to do and it showed the project label to do. They when are I separate labels. On either one of those, it only took me to the list of issues in the project. Yes. That's so right. they're the yes. same. But but we filter them by label name, not by label ID. Right. So it doesn't matter which of them they have. If you filter the label, the issue list, you will see both. So yeah, so 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 it's super confusing. Yeah, so let me, I think that's good. that's the point, right? It, yeah. If it has the same name, it will probably have the same uh, meaning. So, I mean, we, yeah. we're not probably going to do that. But why don't we just, if you already have a group label with that name, why would we even allow people to create the same label at the project label? Is there any uh, cause we did, that? Cause we, I don't think we'd actually do let you do it that way, but we do let you create a group label if you already have a project label with that mm -hmm. name. Um, and basically a bunch of people have already done that. Not, not a yeah. huge amount, but some people have already done that. Yep. So well, um, I think yeah. some of it's automatic too, because I think the reason I even have those duplicates is because I created an issue board with the default labels. Right, yeah, that's, that's probably true. <laughs> and the other thing is um, when you... Um, Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. When you, before we had group labels, if you search for issues at the group level and you wanted to use the label filter, 
we would blend together labels with the same name for exactly that reason. Like, you know, you don't want to search by label ID because then you would only see issues in one project. You want to search by label name so you can see all issues with that label name. So like Pedro said, it's the name that's the important thing. But then, I mean, one solution to this could be just the, the, the back end and the front end just pass the name all the time and never pass the ID and just say like, add the label to do to this issue, remove the label to do from this issue. And then it's up to the back end to figure out if there is a relevant label with that name to match. And if there is, it does it. And if there isn't, it doesn't. Um, Cause at the moment it's sort of a weird mix of using the name and the ID. Um, but I don't know, like I said, I, de I don't want to get too ambitious here. I just want it to be, terrible but some, you can somehow muddle through and get what you want uh so, jan i think you were looking at this as well right with um luca oh there's jan gone uh, I think so. like never mind <laughs> he was <laughs> so in the in the issue description the expect the expected thing is three different to-do labels and and a bad solution or a boring solution would be just to add the project name yeah, or even just not have the project name would even be boring for... Um, yeah, I mean, just it, three different labels, even without the project name, I think will be kind of boring and still kind of work because if one doesn't work, you just pick the next one in the list and then yeah. you just pick one after it. Like, and just tell them to use different colors for now, right? So, so, yeah, or different names or whatever. Or yeah, yeah, just use different name, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I think... I don't think we intend, like from what you re were describing, Sean, I don't, historically, I don't think we intended it to be smart, but I think because we were so smart and when we built on it, it became smart and just combined colors. Well, maybe the combined colors thing, I don't know how that came about, but that looks like somebody coded that, the combined colors thing. But the, the fact that it's, it's combining labels of, of the same name, I think that's just a consequence of us showing names and not IDs or, or unique yes. for ID, right? Right. Yeah, it's because we group by name. And we also do that on the dashboard, which I think I mentioned in the issue, but I'm right. not too worried about the dashboard labels list because it's basically okay. unusable pretty much anyway. So, right. yeah. So, so Annabelle, what, what I, I, I wanted to do, and I think Sean is agreeing, is that right now there's some weird cases. If you look in the description, sometimes it's combining and sometimes it's showing three separate. I just wanted to make it explicit in the code or in the functionality that every time you assign a label, you can, the GitLab tells you all three are separate or all five or, or whatever. And then you can click and you can select and deselect any of them and then it's consistently separate. Um, and so you can see everything consistently. And then an iteration after this is to present um, where it originates from if we need it. And then beyond that, then we, we look at the searching, searching functionality on, on a filter bar, because when, when you search on a filter bar, you can just search by name, but not by ID. So you could maybe like search by three different to do's. So how do we handle that? I don't know. And I don't care at this level. And then maybe even further down the road, we address all those um, uh, edge cases where when you're creating a new label, does GitLab tell you that you already have one of the same name and validations and stuff like that. So I think all those are really far away. But if we just address this initial thing that, that I have at this issue, I think this will go a huge long way to um, just bringing sanity that what labels are uniquely um, independent in the database and thus as also presented to the user, which it should be. Yeah, the only argument I could think of against that was the situation, like I said before, where you had different project labels, but you didn't have group labels at all. Um, and you were trying to filter at the group level. Now we would just say like, if you see only results from one project, that's because you're using project labels, just promote them to group labels if you right, want to see right. results across projects, because that's how you do that. Cool. Uh, so Annabelle, that was probably way more info than you were expecting. Uh, does that help? Yes and no. I need to I need to create some more projects, some more labels locally and just see I'm still not clear on these duplicates, but I'm going to play around with it a little bit and then I'll, I'll ping you in the issue. I, mean, so I, I have just two questions. Does anyone know for sure what it, where is the, the place where the combined colors appear? Is it, is it on the issue sidebar or Epic sidebar or? I think it's any way you can have a label drop down. So either when you're assigning labels or filtering by labels, basically, I think any of those can potentially show a mixed color label. 
Yeah, the example I posted was on an issue, a project issue. And I was just trying to assign a label and there are two different to do's. Okay, so for, for if, if you already have, and those to do's were two labels in the same project with the same name or were they project and group? Project and group. And I think that was just an offshoot of creating an issue board in that project. And then I don't know when I promoted one to group, but. Yeah, I mean, I think the separation makes sense, but at the same time, I don't know if we're actually improving anything. We're just doing it differently uh, because you still don't know, like other than the colors and if you're colorblind, uh, that's even worse, but you don't even know where they belong to. So you don't know if you're selecting so, the project or the group or even inside the same project, which one is it? Right? I, I think it's a, it's a net improvement, Pedro, because literally in some cases, again, um, feel free to, to, to try to generate all the scenarios, Animal, but at, at some point I gave up <laughs> because they're so complicated. So, um, so be warned. Um, but, but why I think it's a net improvement, Pedro, is because what I'm proposing as a result of this change, at least for any new data, you will always be able to add labels and remove labels uniquely. Right now, there's these weird edge cases that, you know, Luca brought up where you can't, you can't even there might be like three to do's on an issue labels, uh, three to do labels on issue, and you can't remove like one of them or two of them or all of them. And there's just these weird edge cases where the data is just stuck. So what I'm proposing right. is that you're, you're making it unstuck. So you can actually reliably add labels and remove labels on any given object. So I think that's gotta be a net improvement. Um, even yeah, at it's, the cost it's of something. Like, yes. <laughs> even at and yeah, I don't think there's any negative because like the negative is that there's like three to do's instead of one to do, but like that's not a negative. That's like a, maybe a lateral movement of, of yeah. understanding, <laughs> right? So, so that's why I still, I think it's a it's a net improvement from that perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, not a lot, but it's a little little bit uh, of improvement. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I just think we should, we should uh, try to um, very quickly have a solution. Um, yeah. yeah, to me, it's this. like we're, we're stopping the bleeding as well with this one. So yes, like exactly. That. Like and stop the bleeding, but yeah. at the same time, exactly. uh, let's, even if we use the same issue to do it, let's just discuss some sure. quick ideas to, to solve this. Like, uh, I don't know, if you select a label instead of an issue, it will always be the project label and never the group label if you have the same names right. or we put, uh, we put this, the, 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 path. the project and yeah. group paths or something. Um, well, I think that's what's happening, by the way. When you select the combined color label, it does assign the project label. Yeah, so, so that, that's good. But, but I don't know why we have the two colors. That's the... <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. I think time's up. So I will put this on the internet, this video, and we'll go from there. Thank you, everybody. See you all next week.